So I've been virtually co-teaching a grade five, six class in Teachers College, right? And with that said, it was difficult at first, I'm not even gonna lie. I got to be put into like, I guess you can call it breakout rooms, um, where we were put into little rooms virtually, and then I would get like five or six kids, and then I would have to teach them on there, and that was fun. But here's problem number one. In the middle of me explaining fractions to these grade five, six students that I were in my group, I literally had to pee in the middle of it. So I'm literally like writing on my whiteboard, you know, trying to show them how to solve this problem. And then in my head, I'm thinking, God damn, how am I supposed to show them how to solve this problem when I'm that very math problem? How long can Pree hold in her pee if she drank three fourths of a water bottle? Hey guys, so in this video, I really want to be talking about something that I wanted to share for those of you who have an overactive bladder or even incontinence for that matter and that's the gut microbiome's association with an overactive bladder. So um, <laughs> in this video I wanted to address um, how after reading about the gut microbiome, guys I was just so mind This entire time when I always wondered why I had an overactive bladder, well it wasn't just because of my multiple sclerosis, rather it was because of me and I failed to realize that. So if you're watching my video right now and you have that overactive bladder or even incontinence, I just hope you really gain something from this video because had I had someone tell me about, I don't know, the gut microbiome prior to 2017, I don't think I'd be going through an overactive bladder to the extent in which I am right now. And that's what's just so frustrating because I f***ed up. I just really wanted to make this video to kind of give you that awareness that take care of your gut microbiome because it's going to screw you over in the end if you really don't take care of it. Before I even begin this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And for now, I hope you guys enjoy this video. So you are what you eat is basically what goes in must affect your health outcomes, right? And it's like, why do we still continue to eat the crap that we do, most of us, when we know very well that this is not going to sit well with us? The way I see it, it's almost as if food has just become a guilty pleasure for most of us, and yes, myself included at a certain point, where it's like, because something tastes so good, we just believe that it's doing no harm to our bodies, but it is. It's over our gut microbiome, and this is something that I literally just realized <laughs> less than a month ago, and I feel like a complete idiot because I'm just like, why did it take me a multiple sclerosis diagnosis to realize all I had to do was take care of my gut microbiome for me to avoid all of the problems I'm having right now? <sighs> no, I don't need to pee. I'm just, I can't breathe when I talk too fast. But, um, <laughs> I, w I was, I was, can't even speak. The question that kept coming across my head was, maybe it's the food that we're eating that really does trigger our overactive bladder. And maybe it isn't just that chronic illness or, another illness, or maybe you don't even have an illness and you just have that overactive bladder. Maybe this is just something that we can really control with taking care of our gut microbiome, but no one's gonna goddamn tell you that. But maybe what's triggering our overactive bladder is nothing but ourselves. We're triggering our, our bodies and it's just something that no one's really gonna tell you because it's a little harsh if someone were to tell you that. But I guess I'm saying it to you guys, but at the same time, I'm also saying it to myself. For me, for instance, I've come to accept that with the lack of knowledge behind the gut microbiome and just not taking care of it is what led me to where I am today. Um, that took me four years. Wow, pretty wow. Um, <laughs> so for those of you who have an overactive bladder or even incontinence, I just hope you take my word for it as someone with an overactive bladder as well. Though we may have different conditions as to why we even have that overactive bladder, I just hope you know that our diet is what's screwing us over for the most part, with us even realizing it, and this just gets into my next point. Probably about two years after my multiple sclerosis diagnosis in 2017, I decided to make a change with the way I was eating, but it wasn't like a complete change rather it was just going vegan and going vegan i know it i kind of had a feeling it wouldn't be too difficult for me because i already wasn't having eggs in my diet because i'm definitely allergic to that since birth anyways um so reading ingredients before i eat anything was not anything new to me it was just something i would just have to add on to the list of things i needed to watch out for like eggs gelatin meat dairy um 
Is there something else? I'm probably missing something, but you guys get the point. The one thing I did to kind of study my body was literally going vegan on January 1st of 2019. And yes, I specifically started the first day of January because I knew I'd be more committed to doing it. So for me, I've been a vegan for literally two years now, and it's literally been the biggest game changer for both my multiple sclerosis and my overactive bladder. Now, why going vegan was a game changer for my overactive bladder was because I wasn't upsetting my... I guess you could say my bladder as much as I was prior to going vegan because for me I actually experienced an overactive bladder not being a vegan as well as being a vegan and there's a huge difference between the two as a vegan my bladder I feel like I had control over it to some extent but I still wet myself like whenever I go outside I never walk outside without a diaper on because I I just have that fear I have that paranoia that I'm gonna wet myself and I actually do end up wetting myself every single time I go outside but it hasn't been too bad for this past month now because I've been taking care of my gut microbiome. Um, <laughs> study the foods that work for you and the foods that don't. Even if something tastes so good and you're realizing that you're pooing or you're peeing a lot more than usual, there's probably something wrong with that kind of food that you're literally putting into your system and it's time to take care of that. I just had a hard time understanding why I was still having that overactive bladder even going vegan because I, I just I knew I, I felt different having having an overactive bladder with going vegan and not being a vegan but it was still there and yes I know I have MS but it's like I knew I had control over this but I couldn't figure out what it was and then I would go on phases with vegan foods where I would have like one kind of food consecutively day after day and it's like I never realized that that was messing with my gut microbiome where all I had to do was balance my meals and this just gets into my next point. So for me personally, I wasn't too bad with um, not balancing my meals per se. Rather, I was really bad with not balancing my drinks. And when I say drinks, I'm not talking about alcoholic beverages because I've A, never been drunk, B, I already walk like a drunk anyways according to my dad so um, <laughs> if I could go back I honestly wish I would have taken care of my gut microbiome earlier on because at this point I can't even have almond milk I can't have soy milk and soy milk was my number one and I can't even have that it's like ugh, I haven't forgotten about it but I mean I just can't have it but why I actually can't have almond milk and soy milk is because I never balanced those drinks out. I started off with almond milk. Almond milk I literally had too many times in a day for literally too many times in a month and it ended up being a year for me to realize that I shouldn't have been having it for that long uh, without trying other drinks as well. Soy milk, I honestly went on a phase with this where I would have soy milk so many times in a day but week after week after week and then month after month it didn't lead up to an entire year because I think it was about a few months in I discovered adult diapers and as soon as I discovered adult diapers was when I realized I had to cut out um, soy milk because soy milk was just not sitting well with me so what would happen prior to discovering adult diapers well I would just pee in my pants and my poo would just go rolling down my legs because my poo comes out in pebbles out in public and I mean I wouldn't see these people out in public anyways and that's just the kind of mentality I had where it's like when I would actually pee or poo in my pants it was like you know what pre you're never gonna see these people again so it's okay do everything you have to do right now because you're not gonna see them tomorrow unless you're working with them or in class with them and yeah <laughs> processed foods I don't know what it is for me personally it doesn't sit well with me and also I have multiple sclerosis and there's like this whole um, thing about people who have multiple sclerosis shouldn't be having processed foods and this is difficult and I'm not gonna lie the only processed foods I have are tofu but I really like tofu. Tofu is so good. It's it's vegan. It's not meat. It's not steak. It's not a cow. It's tofu. Um, but I know people are always like, oh my god, you shouldn't be having tofu because uh, people with multiple sclerosis shouldn't be having any soy products or anything like that. And that's, this actually leads me into soy milk because maybe soy milk really didn't sit well with me because it was soy. 
But it's really interesting because tofu actually does not do anything to my bladder in terms of it being bad. So that's why I'm still having it. I've just been very careful with um, tofu in the sense where I'll only have it once a week. And why I do this is because if I have it every single day, I'm, gonna, I'm just afraid I'm going to have to cut out tofu. The one thing I also want to try is seitan. Um, I absolutely love seitan. I just don't know how to cook it. Um, I'll learn. Um, <laughs> so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. I'll post links down below as always. And I'll see you guys in my next video. And yeah, so bye guys.